to B&H Photo. We've gone shopping for off-camera flash. And you can see here, um, the this is what's come up. They're very expensive. Um, but this is what, whenever you see a uh, reference or you hear reference to off-camera flash, these are what it's referencing. And these are flashes. They can sit on the camera, but they're also wireless that connect to the camera so that you can move them. Because for the most part, uh, you don't want to flash people straight on. Here's an example. Okay, so the first, the one on the left, is she just flashed the flashes being broadcast directly at her, and that's the end result. And we see a lot of photos like that, right? We see you often will look at photos that someone's taken with a flash, and the subject is blown out. The one on the right, they diffused the light, or they used one of these things. And as you can see, they're very expensive. Um, there are some inexpensive ones. And the reason flashing or flashes are nice is because they're compact. Um, I, I personally go out of my way to carry stands and separate lights because I just, I like being able to move my lights around. And you can still do that, but they're not in sync with your camera the way these are. And that is the great thing about a flash is that it, it coordinates with your camera to make sure you're getting the right light. However, you have to know how to position it properly. And in this case, the light is just bounced here. Probably looks like off the ceiling or high off the wall. Now, if you do have a flash on your camera, you can diffuse it. And this, this great article here, which is uh, uh, Take Better Flash Photos from Wired, it's called Take Better Flash Photos, Wired Magazine, says that you can make one. A ping pong ball, you can either cut a hole in it and put it over your flash, or you can cut it in half and tape it to your flash. And it acts like a little bit of a diffuser. Um, white electrical tape is pretty good for phone cameras and point and shoot cameras where the flash doesn't pop up or move at all. You just put a little piece of white tape over the flash LED and it diffuses it. It's cheap, sticks well, peels off cleanly when not required. Uh, another thing you can do that's inexpensive is to uh, make a milk jug screen or a juice container. And the whole idea, what ha ends up happening is the light bounces around inside the plastic and what gets through is produces a nice soft diffuse diffused effect so there are inexpensive ways until you are a famous photographer and you can um, afford some of this high-end top-end equipment there is a, a one that is not too expensive and it actually got pretty good reviews yeah Almost 350 people reviewed it, and it got pretty good reviews. So that's one of the, the less expensive ones. Now, this is for Canon, so you want to make sure you're getting one that's compat compatible with your camera. Okay. So one of the things we want to talk about, and I've just gone to the popular photography website, is to understand that most people think that the only time you use flash is when it's dark. And while this photo was definitely taken, it was actually done with a speed light that I'll show you what I'm talking about. Speed light. That is a name of one of those off camera flashes. Um, while flash is used in dark, can be used in dark situations, uh, that's not the only time that you want to use it. You can also, by the way, paint with light. You can go outside and set up your camera on a tripod and paint with and I literally mean paint with light by get a a light source like a flashlight and shine it on something that's in the dark and say for instance I had uh this was in the dark and I didn't have a flash and I just sh decided to shine a flashlight just on that sunflower and the rest of this would just you know get a little bit of the ambient light only that would be brightly lit and everything else would be dark you can kind of see what I'm talking about it, you know everything else would look like over here 
Whereas, you know, this one obviously got the brunt of the light. But you could do that. And I keep going different directions with this, and I apologize. But um, I want to show you what he did. He did some really cool stuff with light painting. And that's none of it, which is odd because I typed in light painting and let's try this. Okay, well, let's just take his name out, even though he did it. <clears throat> I wanted to show you guys this beautiful photo. But I'm not sure what I need to search. Hmm. Ooh, that's cool. Look at that. Someone did that. Ooh, look at that. Okay, that's not at all what I was going to show you guys, but that's seriously cool. All kinds of stuff you can do. That's a great job, right? That's a, actually a great example. Now, let me show you. Ooh, wait a minute. Let's use this one. So he's using a drone, and he's just got it circling, and it's lighting up, and that is painting with light at night, and that's what I'm talking about. It's not what I wanted to show you guys, but it's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, right? So this is a drone making the light movement, the ring. And the light that it's casting is painting on the salt flats. Yeah, here we go. Look at that. Isn't that great? And he just did that with a drone. Not, I'm going to say it like it's simple, but just people are like, well, what is, what is that lighting system? That's what I mean. The lighting system's a drone. And I guess in this case, two drones. It's really cool. Okay, so back to this. Okay, so... Whoops, actually, this. So the only time, I mean, not the only time to use your, your flash is in the, in the dark. If you use your flash while you're photographing something that's in motion, you can capture that, mo that object in motion. Um, anything moving, what it will allow you to do is use a <clears throat> very fast shutter speed. And when you flash the subject, it will stop motion like this. Sometimes when you're shooting in sunset and the sun is, in this case, the sun is behind her, using the flash will, works as a fill light so that she's not in shadow because she would be in shadow otherwise, right? Because what would be your light, your camera would be reading the light and it's got this sun glaring at it. So she would be in shadow. So the way to prevent from blowing out the sky is not by compensation, exposure compensation, but is by adding flash. And in this case, if we diffuse the flash, the, the flash is diffused. We get this nice soft glow to the picture. It's really nice. Actually, they used uh, off-camera flash to the right. This is somebody running up and jumping off that wall and I only know this because my when I briefly taught high school my students used to do that and photograph each other just like this and that allows you to stop motion they use three Nikon speed lights speed light let's look let's look that up because you're gonna see that terminology and it can and it's a it's a brand of light 
Oh, I guess they don't carry it. No, there we do. They carry cannon speed light. Yeah, it's got five or 200 and I mean, 318 five star reviews. A little more pricey, but you know, it's, it's what everybody goes to now. So they have for Canon. That one's less expensive. I don't see the speed light for Nikon, but they make it too. Okay. So back to this. So they actually use three lights to get that. And they probably did it based on key light, fill light, backlight, or light lighting the scene over there. But you can almost tell by looking at the wall that there was definitely flashing from that direction. And you can see on his face that there was flashing from this direction. Okay, so they suspended this <clears throat> piece of toast and photographed it so that you could see through it like that. <laughs> Okay, so know that your shutter speed affects the ambient light that you get, right? Your bounce light, but not your flash exposure. Because the flash is just this really brief burst that occurs only a fraction of the second that the shutter is open. And so as a result, you're getting, your, your, when you're taking a picture of the flash, only for a fraction of the exposure is the flash lighting the object. Okay, so you can actually darken or lighten the ambient exposure by increasing or reducing the shutter speed while maintaining the same aperture. So basically what that means you want to do is when you're, you've got everything set up and you've got all your light readings taken, oh, try, try overexposing and underexposing by a full f-stop and then evaluate it and make adjustments from there. That's not even a good photo. I don't even know why they put that in there. Now, this is what's, what's interesting about this shot is this was shot in the middle of the day in sunlight, and they used a flash to get rid of the shadows. And that's, that's another great um, time to use flash is to get rid of shadows. The only problem is the sun was in her face, so she's squinting. So she looks, she looks like she's in pain. So that makes this a bad, in my opinion, despite the fact that the, sh the flash helped get rid of the shadows that you would normally have to make this, you know, well exposed. The look on her face is just makes it a terrible photo. Yeah, because they used F um, 5.6 and a polarizing filter to get that exposure. For natural look, um, use in fill flash underexpose the flash and you can do that and I'm going to show you in the next video I'm going to show you on my camera how to do that how to underexpose and overexpose your flash so you can control it also know that the flash has color so one of the things you might need to do is um, adjust the color color balancing in Photoshop or Lightroom to get to get it to clean up the final image I think that's a great photo. And so this showed that you can, you know, in some some of the flashes, you can adjust them more than others. Um, and in this one, they should, he only used one 64th power to get the effect that he wanted, which was he flashed, he used flash, and this is off-camera flash, to light the person. But he didn't, he made it so minimal that you still have background. Because normally what happens when you flash somebody the background goes black. You get that really dark background. Unless it's lit up. But most of the time, you'll get those bad, bad exposures where the, the background gets really, really dark. So in order to not have, in order to have a beautiful background, he reduced the power of the flash. Flash can capture the motion of water, water in motion. Right. Now, generally, flash works better with the camera in manual exposure mode because you control both settings. Okay, we're going to stop here for this video and continue in the next.